hips. It's going to be continuing from the work we did last week, really opening up the hips. And this time we're going to kind of go in to use our makeshift foam roller, which lately has been a rolling pin. So if you need to, we're going to do some uh, rolling on this. If you need to dampen the the effect of the intensity of this, you can just wrap a towel around it. I don't have them with me. Uh, actually, I do. So I can show you real quick. <clears throat> because what I love about the towel is the texture that it gives because it helps grip the fascia and even the muscle a little bit easier. So if I kind of roll this around the, the foam roller, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> the rolling pin, then it becomes also a little softer and then it also gives a little bit more grip. If you have a foam roller, by all means use it. I love this one here. It's got a lot of texture on it, but because I know most uh, people may not have one, I wanna start off with this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a little mobility on this high hip, because when we get into positions where we wanna open up the hip and stretch the hip, sometimes if it's just really ropey and stiff here, we just can't even feel and be aware of the stretch that's happening here, and we might compensate quite a bit through that hip anyway, even if we're doing our best to tuck and get into a good position. So we're gonna start off and give that hip a little bit of a chance to function a little better, knowing that we have something coming up after this where we're going to actually be using this hip and hopefully cementing in the mobility. So I'm basically putting this roller right where I'm talking about stretching. So if you find your hip bone and just go right into this high section, we're going to be kind of going across like this, only rolling up and down to get to different spots, but then we're actually going to kind of go across it with pressure. So I'm going to lay right on that spot. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get about two or three minutes aside. I'm going to be looking at the clock. So if you can join me, great. If not, you can hang out during this part if you just don't have anything. And we're just kind of moving across this tissue here, and I'm realizing how dark it is right now, so I'm going to add a little more light. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully that'll help a little bit. And <clears throat> so right back on that high hip. And what's great is we can start our breath work here too. So normally, sometimes, I'll start with just breathing. But I want to just jump right in to try to get the breathing happening while we're rolling. So as I'm rolling and I'm looking around, I'm looking for stiff spots, looking for anything that feels tender, like right here is pretty tender. I'm going to pause, take a big breath in. I can even contract that area a little bit, tighten up, press into it, feel that tension in the muscle, and then we're going to let it go with a long breath out. And just let that roller work in or whatever tool you're using. Could be a water canteen that's hard enough and stable enough. Could be your rolling pin, could be a foam roller, whatever you have. And then I'm just letting this foam roller in. I'm just breathing initially just to get used to the pressure. Again, if it's too painful to move around, just hold it. Take a big breath in. Hold your breath for a second. Maybe contract the core. You can press your knee into the ground to activate that hip a little bit. Then you can relax, breathe out. trying to get about a nice six to 10 second exhale. And I can tell already it's not quite as sensitive as it was when I first hit the spot. So I'm gonna move on to a new spot now. Because remember, I wanna get a good amount done in about another couple minutes here. And I'm just rolling, I'm checking the outside of the hip. I'm going to the front, but it's mostly ropey in the front and tight and tender. It feels stiff. It feels almost like I'm rolling over an extension cord or like a speed bump where it's just a clunk where the muscle is just not relaxed. It's not giving in. And we want to make sure that we're not tensing up and guarding, but we're trying to let this roller work through the layers and just work into that muscle, get some release because we're going to get up and use it in a minute. So again, I'm probably taking a little longer than the two or three minutes I'd normally recommend just because I want to give you guys some ways to coach yourself through this and use some different tools like contract, relax. So we're gonna take that breath in. We're gonna contract. We can drive our knee into the ground to activate the front, feeling that muscle press into the roller, and then we're gonna let go and breathe out. <sighs> we 
When we exhale, it really lets the roller in and it tells our brain, hey, this is safe and effective and this is going to help me. It's going to make me feel better, move better, help me get some release into this hip that's maybe stiff from sitting all day. So just a little bit. That's it. We're staying right in this little high section. Now I'm going to switch sides. I have some sense of how that side felt. <clears throat> so I'm going to compare sides. I'm kind of in discovery mode here. Try not to get frustrated about being tight or frustrated about having to sit all day or what's going on with my body. It's getting tight. Just noticing. Knowing that I can change it all with my breathing. Change it all with this, this uh, rolling pin here, this pressure into this area. Just trying to relax. So remember, if starting off with movement, you feel like you're guarding or holding your breath, just relax. Pause for a minute. Take a nice big breath in. Maybe drive the knee into the ground. That's going to activate the muscle so that right when we're done activating and contract, 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 we let it all go. And just let that roller in. We're going back and forth. Just a couple more minutes on this side. I want to make sure we get a little bit of time. So I'm spending probably closer to five minutes each side just because I want to make sure you guys have some ways to think about this if you do it on your own. And again, we're just rolling back and forth, checking out this whole front of our hip. Again, if I don't feel anything tender or it's hard for me to feel, that's okay. This is a good opportunity then if it's not too tender to just work on breathing. In through the nose, fill that belly, get used to sort of differentiating the core from the hip and feeling how as you exhale that that, that tool, this roller can just kind of work deeper into the tissue. So if it's not tender, that's okay. We're still working on contracting and relaxing. So I can take a big breath in here. How quick can I contract and drive that knee into the ground? And then how quick can I let it off tension? And just let it go and let that work in. And you may notice that as you get more relaxed, as you let that roller work further in, that, ooh, now I feel something tender. Especially as I've worked in through the front, and now I start rolling out to the side. Oh, now that side feels like I just hit something. <sighs> or I can roll in towards the, more towards the middle. But I'm staying right in that high hip where I'm hoping to help get better activation of my glutes. Open up my hip more for any hip leg related movements where I need to be able to stand up from a hinge or a squat or a lunge or step up and down on something. Or I've been just sitting all day and maybe this hip's just really tight from just being stuck in a seated position for so long. <sighs> trying to get some length back, trying to allow my glutes to work now. So again, I'm going to take one more time, big breath in, drive that knee into the floor, push, 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 and let it go. <sighs> And let that sink in. If I can take a comfortable breath, then I know those tissues are feeling a little healthy. If I'm guarding and tight, then I know this could use some more work. All right, good. So we did our few minutes each side. We got our breathing in. And now we're going to just check things out. <clears throat> so we're going to go back to where we started um, or finished mainly last week, which is really getting into this common stretch position. How does it feel now to sort of tuck that hip and pull that pubic bone up and get that stretch through the high part of the hip? If you're kind of dumped forward a little bit, you might just feel it down here. But when you really pull up on that pubic bone and tuck that hip, you should feel the stretch come up a little bit higher to where we were rolling. And you may notice now that as you move in and out, hey, Maybe it feels a little easier to keep my butt tight. Maybe it feels a little bit easier to shift forward and keep my hip level. Right? We can think about positions like lunges, for example, where I need to be able to keep that stability of my glute. Right? Anything where we're going up and down or just getting our leg behind us, it's an important skill, especially if we sit. It's hard to get this leg behind us without dumping forward and just pushing that belly out instead. So go back to where you have some decent mobility, tuck the hip, and then challenge it forward a little bit. And we're just practicing kind of moving in and out, noticing, hey, can I keep my glute tight? <sighs> can I just get some movement in? Can I get towards the ground now? 
and press my hip forward a little bit, pressing that hip open versus pressing the belly. But keep that rib cage down where you can breathe into your core. So I can feel as I breathe into my belly, it's a little easier to get air in. I can get more fill into my core because my glute is able to contract and stabilize my low back. So now I'm just mobilizing better. I can press that hip forward, go into this side, go into that side, and just moving around. And again, we're trying to keep that glute on. We're trying to teach that glute to work against the stiffness in that hip. So I'm driving my toe down. It's kind of hard to see a little bit everything that's going on. And then we're going to press that knee back. See if I can drive that knee back, flex the quad against stiffness in the hip. And now I'm in more of a long lever shape. We call this long lever where the leg is nice and straight. This is more short. This might feel easier to keep your glute tight. This might feel harder, which is one of the reasons planks are so challenging to hold sometimes. So we're actually opening up the doors for a lot of things to get easier when we can get a little movement in through that hip. So we just went through about three different positions the whole time trying to keep the glute engaged. So we can kind of go back and forth. Maybe now this feels like you can open it up a little better. <sighs> Making sure we can breathe. And now I'm going to add in a little hamstring. So we're going to straighten out that leg. Pull that toe up if you don't feel a stretch. Or you can now hinge, in which case we're going to shut that glute off for a second. Get a little stretch down the front of that or the back of that leg. Then squeeze the glute. Go see if you can engage the glute back. Find that neutral hip. Press into that hip. Then we go out, flex the quad against the hamstring, come back up, see if you can engage that hip again. So a little bit more of a movement flow, cycling between kind of two different positions. And so we need to be able to keep that midline pretty stable in order to feel the movement and the mobility happening in the hips. So we're just going to go back and forth here, squeezing the glute, pressing that leg. Squeezing the glute, pressing out that leg. Again, squeeze that glute tight. <sighs> Again, let's go back down, get into those hands. Again, see if we can squeeze the glute, drive it towards the floor, open up that hip. See if you can press that quad straight. See if you can get a little bit more of that hip driving down. But don't let that knee just sag. Try to fire through that quad if you can. See if you get down now to your elbows. And just breathe here. We're opening up this hip too. So I can push my hand out into this knee. We're worth mostly just exploring the applications for opening up this hip. But we're doing a lot of other stuff too. I can get my hand, push this knee out. I can walk over. Push that leg, get all of this open. I'm thinking about squatting right now. I'm thinking about all the other things that I can do if I can get these hips open. I'm going to come back. I can turn and look behind me. Just breathing. I can get the knee down, relax that foot. And now turn and drop that hip. Think if I can get that pocket down into the ground. Turn and rotate. Try and keep this foot pretty straight and just turn and look behind you. You can hug your knee if you need to help your knee or keep yourself from falling. Big breath in and out. But keep that glute tight. Now we're going to come back. Go back through the various stages we've been, right? Knee down. How's that feel? Keeping that hip open. Coming back up. Does your glute feel like it's still there? Or are you getting tired and starting to dump through the low back? And great, we just did a bunch on that side. Let's switch. So before you switch, just go to a double kneeling position and just see how does it feel on both sides. I can definitely feel how this side I just did feels like I can drive it forward. I can use my glute further into this range. This side, uh, it's like there's a roadblock here. It's not quite as opened up. So see if you can just feel how does it feel to squeeze the glutes on both sides? Do you feel a difference? Right, there's like an ease, hopefully, of stabilizing on this side because you just opened up this hip so much now that glute can work a little better. So we're gonna start in the same position. 
switching sides, opening up that hip, tucking that hip. Remember, we got to go up high here in the hip. So if we kind of relax and let it shift, we're not maybe going to get as deep a stretch as we could. So remember, the reason we went in there and opened up with a roller first is to give this hip a chance to get into this more finely tuned position and now work into our hip flexor opener, our hip opener, quad. There's so many things that are getting opened up here. Our breathing. So again, I'm using that glute to press forward and back, especially noticing that I'm keeping that glute tight, pressing forward, pressing back, pressing forward, pressing back, keeping that glute tight, breathing in, feeling the air fill into that pelvis, exhaling out, noticing the ease with which I can breathe. Once I feel like I've gotten a little bit of that going, I'm going to try to go down a little bit lower, see if I can get my hip closer to the ground. Okay, so now I'm working on not being stuck back here, but pressing that hip towards the floor, trying to further open that hip, using the glute to press the hip, not the belly. Keep that rib cage down, hip tucked, and just remember, press through the hip. You can move left, right, you can hunt around for stiff corners. Keep that glute super squeezed. A lot of the challenge is just gonna be keeping that glute working, not letting it go. You're gonna maybe wanna dump out and just uh, come off tension for a second. If you do, go back to where you have some mobility, tuck that hip, and then go back forward again. See if you can go in for another round of breathing. Because then we want to see, hey, can I flex the glute and the quad against the hamstring and that hip? You could do some reps of that. Squeeze. Squeeze. Just go in and out. Make sure you're breathing, not holding your breath. I want to be able to breathe in both positions. Getting good fill into that core, 360. Keeping that glute flexed. <sighs> Moving back and forth, showing myself I can own this position, I can own that position. Now we're going to come up. And before we go down to our elbows into that more perfect stretch position, we're going to open up this hamstring a little bit. So we're going to move forward and back. We're going to press through, flex that quad against the hamstring. Back and forth. <sighs> driving through that leg. If I want to tip forward, it's going to give me more stretch. If there's too much pain behind the knee, you can try pointing your toe. That'll take off a little bit of that. Or if you need it because you're just not feeling much of a stretch, you can also drop the head. You can kind of flex more forward. That's going to give more, more stretch, more tension on the nerves though too. So that's why we're going in and out versus just sitting here and holding. Okay, because there's a lot of neural tension back there. and We want to just kind of Touch it and come out. Contract and come out. Breathe out. <sighs> Breathing in through the nose. Contract that quad. Come back out. And then all the while, yes, I'm thinking about this leg now, but I'm still thinking about that glute back here. Keeping that hip tucked. <sighs> Especially when I go into that extended position. Now we're going to go back down. We're going to go a little deeper this time. See if we can get those elbows down. And still keep this glute tight. Open up that hip. Back and forth. Back and forth. Big breath in and out. Just breathing. Remember, I can walk away. Open up that hip. Drive that knee out. Big breath in and out here. That feels okay. I can drop the knee. Drop the shin. I can turn and aim the side of my hip towards the ground and look behind me and just press this hip down and open up this whole lateral side here. I can hug my knee. I'll show you guys from this side just in case because I think I showed it from the other side here. I can get that knee down, grab that knee, turn, and I'm kind of dropping that hip and just trying to turn. I'm trying to keep this foot straight as best I can. Control that ankle, control this arch, big breath in, hugging that knee, driving that hip towards the ground. 
Then I can come back out, go back to a couple of my positions, just double checking. Hey, did anything change? Are these feeling a little easier now? I'm constantly checking in, trying to figure out what's helping. Opening up. Pressing forward, pressing back. Pressing forward, pressing back. Just like that. All right, so we've done some great work on this. Now we're going to try to use it into a little bit more of a flow. Okay, so what we're going to do is a perfect stretch. <clears throat> and we're going to kind of move in and out of the perfect stretch with sort of a nonstop cycle of movement. And so what that's going to look like is touching some of these positions we've already done. So we're going to start in sort of a wide leg straddle position and a plank. Where we're now we got to use the core, we got to use our shoulders. Hey, we're still using our glute. Okay, we're going to take a big step forward. So that takes some core strength and some mobility just to get that knee up next to our hand. We're going to try to press this knee back, flex that thigh against the hamstring. If you can't, just go to where you can. Press that leg best you can. Come back down. We're going to try to drop our elbow and then rotate up and reach. The whole time our glute's tight. Okay, now we're going to get back into our wide straddle leg position. Switch feet, bring that other leg up. Meantime, we're holding ourselves up. Thinking about keeping that rib cage down, hip tucked. I'm able to move. I'm still able to breathe. Remember, we mapped out a lot of these positions already. So I'm pressing. I'm feeling a little more confident, hopefully a little more open, a little more able to get into these shapes. I'm going to turn and reach. And because I'm adding more movement, hopefully I'm feeling like I can do that because we've already – gone into some of these shapes. So now I'm walking back. I'm going to try to just hang here, get a little stretch. Sorry, a little out of view here. <sighs> Breathe, and then we're going to walk back out. Back into our plank. How do we know our butt's tight here? We haven't lost our low back. If you did that, walk back for a second. Make sure you land here. Glute tight. Take that big step forward. Press that leg back. Get that hip back down, drop that elbow, breathe out. A lot of my clients are familiar with this. We're going to walk back in between sides this time. See how those hamstrings are feeling. Go to that foot. Go to that foot. Walk back out. Kind of just feeling things out a little bit. Squeeze that glute. Make sure I can breathe. Take a big step forward. Keep this foot straight. Ribs down, I can breathe into my belly. Push that knee back. Press that quad, drop the elbow. Breathe, reach. Not really going on to autopilot. We want to be checked in. And we're walking back out again. Using those shoulders, using that core. We're going to go a little faster here. Press, drop the elbow. Rotate. Just breathe nonstop. We're walking back. Hang out down here, breathe, walk back out. We're going to get about five of these total, starting with this flow that we're doing. We're almost done, guys, walking back, getting some arm and shoulder in there. As we walk, I'm thinking about good shoulder position. I'm winding up elbow pit, winding up elbow pit. Get that foot out, press. Making sure I'm breathing. Especially as I fatigue, I don't want to get tired and start holding my breath. Walking back. Walking back out. Now we're in finishing up number four here. Glute tight, ribs down. Big breath in. I can press. Come down. <clears throat> Open up. So just one application of opening up that hip with that rolling pin, and now we're exploring all kinds of things with our hip, right? Taking that hip for a spin, now that we just got it into a new place. Helping the brain understand how we repatterning movement with that mobility drill. I want my brain to hold on to that. So I'm just using it as much as I can while I have this window of opportunity where that hip's a little more open, glutes are working a little bit. Last one here, guys, hold here. Let's not rush it. Big breath in. Press that leg straight. Ah, I still own that shape. 
Come down. How's this feel? We're going to rotate. Breathe. And come back down. And then walk back. Hang out down here. And then we slowly stand up. Ah, you should feel some tension hopefully coming off. Maybe you're breathing hard because you were working through a lot of that. Working through stiffness probably more than anything. Cores might feel a little turned on. Shoulders kind of warmed up. We just did a whole body thing. Okay. So we're all finished. But I want you guys to just check in on something we didn't plan for, which is what I love to do with mobility drills, which is, hey, how does a squat feel? And I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to turn my AC off because I know it's causing some background noise here. And we're just going to check in real quick and just see how it feels to squat. Okay, so if we got our feet maybe a little wider than our shoulders, and we don't want to move our feet. The reason we don't want to move our feet is because that's what our hip's using to wind up off of. Okay, so if I just squeeze my glutes, you'll see how our quads and our hips just kind of wind up screwing our feet into the floor we're picking up that arch our big toes kind of grabbing and holding we don't want to roll and lose our grip right so we keep that big toe down create that arch engage the glutes we're going to drive our knees out early into our squat okay we're going to try to not move our feet we got to work on the stable position of our core all the same stuff we worked on we're going to go down and just see, hey, how does that feel? We spent a lot of time close to the ground. How does it feel to squat? <sighs> Can I breathe here? <sighs> Come back up. Engage those glutes. Remember, we just opened up our hip. So you could see how coming out of a squat should feel a little more comfortable, a little bit easier to and land here with a more stable hip, which means what? A stable spine, able to breathe into our belly better. So even if I just went on to autopilot and just started squatting, I'm going to have a much better chance of landing in a good position because I just mapped out how my brain should be using this hip, how we should be thinking about using our glutes, breathing with it. And hopefully if we can just do a little practice now, get in and out of some squats, go over to a chair, do some squats, maybe squat higher if you feel like you just can't get very low. But that's what's going to help cement this in. Every once in a while, if you get down, you can do any one of the positions from today. Maybe you're hanging out, watching something on TV, streaming something. Just hang out, breathe, go down and hit, touch some of these shapes from this class today. Any one now is going to go back to the brain and remind it, hey, that's a position I did earlier. I should keep this. This feels functional. My back feels a little better. Knee's going to feel a little better. I just feel a little looser, a little more less stressed, right? I just combated the day of sitting a little bit, okay? So you can use any one of these as like an anti-sitting exercise every 15 minutes. You can get into this kneeling position, stretch, activate that glute, get down there, test, hey, make sure that quad works, make sure the glute's working. I could just hang out here and breathe. And if I want to get something more active, I can get up and do some squats, as long as I make sure I finish with those glutes on and those feet nice and stable, okay? Good work tonight, guys. And for those of you who are watching over this weekend, sorry I couldn't be here, and I hope you can use this video to teach you something new while I'm gone, and I'll see you the following week.